Welcome to Interview Pro. In this video, let's talk about error boundary in React. Before that, I want to show you one example. I have a app component with three components, home, about, and contact us. This is how the UI looks. In home component, I have a login page. In about, I have some dummy data. And in contact us, I have few links. Let us assume that the data for about and contact us is coming from an API. Since about is a functional component, we use use effect with an empty dependency array. Here we make an API call. Similarly, since contact us is a class component, we make use of component did mount and we call an API here. Uh, due to some reason, there was a issue in the network call. And uh, what happens when there is an issue? Our application throws an error. So let me just add a throw statement here. Error from about. So uh, now let's save the application and go back to UI. We don't see anything on the screen. Let's go to developer tools console we see the error which we have uh, thrown just now uh, if you look at this error uh, properly it is suggesting us to use a error boundary but what is this error boundary react has a mechanism that would help us to handle errors gracefully without crashing the application in our example Error was thrown in about component, but why are we not uh, seeing other components, home and contact us? It's not the ideal uh, uh, expectation, right? User will expect some response from the uh, UI. This blank page will confuse the user. He doesn't know what is happening with the application. It is always a good practice to return some message to the uh, user. So let's see how we can do that using error boundaries. I have already created a class called error boundary. Remember, error boundary is always a class component. It's not a functional component. I have added the constructor with a state that has a property called has error. I am setting this value to false initially. Now, uh, to handle error, we have to find a way to update the state. And based on this property, we have to return some response to the user. In order to do that, there are two lifecycle methods. We can use either of them or both of them. First lifecycle method is a static method, which is get derived state from error. So let's see how we can handle errors using get derived state from error. This is a static method. Get derived state from error. This will take one parameter error. And this method will would uh, simply return the updated state. What is my updated state? Has error should be set to true. Now, based on this property, we have to render some fallback UI. If this dot state dot has error, if this property is true, then we'll return some message. Uh, when I say you can return some message, you can return either a simple HTML tag or if you have a special component that you want to display in case of errors, you can return that component as well. In my case, I'll simply return a h1 tag that says something went wrong. So this is an error case. But what if there is no error? We'll return this dot props dot children. Why are we returning this dot props dot children? You will understand in a second. So the final step is wrapping your components with error boundary. So what I'm doing here, if there is any error in any of these three components, I want to trigger this error boundary. And based on that, I will display a message, something went wrong. And don't forget to import error boundary, otherwise you'll get an error. Now, if we go to UI, we'll see the message, something went wrong. This is one way using which you can handle errors. The other way is to use another lifecycle method called component did catch. 
component did catch. This will take two parameters, error and info. This method is also similar to get derived state from error. Whenever there is an error in the component uh, uh, hierarchy, this will uh, get triggered. It will receive the error and information. Based on this, you can set the state. In get derived state from error, we simply return the updated state, but in component did catch, we have to update the state using set state. Apart from updating the state and re rendering this component, we can uh, log the error information to some service or to your database. So, uh, since in this uh, demo I don't have any database, I'll simply log the errors to console. By default, we have already seen that whenever there is an error, React will automatically console log the error. But since we want to store this, access this error information and save it somewhere, we can make use of this component did catch where we receive the error and information and we can pass that information to the service. Now, uh, so we have commented this and we have implemented component did catch where we are updating the state and logging the errors. Let's go to the UI. We still see the same behavior. And apart from that, we see the console logs. This is the error and this is info. It's not that you have to use either of these methods. You can use both these methods in combination. So I'll just uncomment get derived state from error. Since this method is taking care of updating the state, we can remove set state from component did catch. Now we still see the same behavior and we still see the errors. So we achieved uh, one thing that whenever there is an error in the UI, we want to display some kind of response to the user. But the error was thrown in about component. Why are we stopping user from accessing home and contact us? It's not a good behavior, right? Whenever there is an error in one of the components, he should be the user should be able to access other components without any issue. So let's see how we can achieve that. We have wrapped all these components in single error boundary, but we can use we can have multiple error boundaries also. So I will wrap each of these components with their own error boundaries. We have error boundary for home. We'll have error boundary for uh, about and contact us. Now let's go back to the UI. Uh, there is an error. Uh, so we are now able to see the home component and contact us. Since there is an error in about component, we see the something went wrong message. Let me add error in contact uh, us page also. I'll copy this error. This is throw. I'll say error from contact us. Now we see error message in both the about and contact us pages. I mean components. I want to show one more thing. In home component, I have added a button called test. When I click on this button, I'm calling a test FN. Uh, this will throw an error due to some reason. So let's see how this uh, error will be handled by our application. As per the logic which we have discussed so far, since we added error boundary to home component, any kind of errors should be handled by this error boundary. And we should see the message something went wrong in home component as well. Uh, this is our login or home component and I'm clicking on the button test. Nothing happened. Let me go to developer tools, console. We see this message error from event handler. This is the message that I'm throwing when I click on this button test. Uh, we have the error logged in the console. This is good. But why are we not seeing something went wrong message in home component as well? This is because 
Error boundaries will not handle errors thrown by event handlers. Only the errors which occurred during the rendering process of a component or any of its subtree, then error boundary will be triggered. Also remember, if there is any error inside the error boundary, that won't be handled by this error boundary. Only the errors which are generated from the children, I mean the components which are wrapped inside error boundary, uh, those errors will be handled by error boundaries. So this is all I have on error boundaries. We have taken a very simple example here and we uh, learned how to handle errors. Either uh, handle all the errors together with a single error boundary or handle individual component errors using multiple error boundaries. Based on your application's requirement, you, you can decide which method you can choose. Also, we have seen what are the different lifecycle methods we can use to handle errors using error boundaries. If you understood this concept, try adding routing to your application and handle errors using error boundary. We'll discuss that example in our next video. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the content, please like, share and subscribe to Interview Pro. Thank you.